the first talk of the afternoon session is by Xin Wang, and uh, he will talk about the entanglement cost for preparing quantum states and beyond. Yeah. So, so please. Hey, good. Uh, thanks for the intro, and also, uh, I want to say thank you to uh, the organizers and uh, all the speakers and the participants to make this workshop really wonderful and uh, enjoyable. Okay, so uh, today I'm. Uh, going to talk about some recent res uh, results on in time cost for preparing quantum states and you know beyond. Okay, so uh, this is already the last day of the workshop, so I believe everyone are very familiar with this kind of you know quantum entanglement. And actually um, we have in the resource zero entanglement, we have three states. And for uh, as separable states for states that are not separable, uh, we call it entangled states, uh, which are resource states. And entanglement is very important to understand quantum information and also uh, how to manipulate it is central to quantum information processing. Okay, so to understand entanglement, uh, there are two major, um, you know, methods. You know, uh, first you need to understand how to uh, do entanglement manipulation. That is about how we can transform entangled states under possible free operations, and also how we can convert entanglement, you know, in your tasks. The second is, you know, uh, entanglement quantification. That is about how entangled is your given state, right? You can quantify it via, you know, operational tasks like, you know, distillation or others. And also you can quantify it just through, you know, mathematical uh, entanglement measures or some other functions, okay. And also it is important to identify what entanglement are used for and, and so on. Okay, so uh, this talk we mainly consider, you know, quantify entanglement via operational way. Okay, and here um, we recall that bell state uh, is the, you know, the currency in time manipulation and quantify entanglement via operational ways. There are two major tasks. One is, you know, in time distillation, another is in time dilution. Okay, considering, you know, the uh, in transformations between given states and bell states. And how to quantify the rates? Actually, you know, in traditional information theories, there are many settings like Shannon asymptotic IAT setting, uh, the one shot rate, non-symptotic estimation, zero error transformation, also even probabilistic protocols. So uh, there are two major operational intermeasures. One is distributed entanglement. It's just to, you know, try to maximize the rate that you can distill bell states from your given states with a asymptotically vanishing error. This is called distillable entanglement. Another, uh, the reverse one is called entanglement cost. It quantifies, you know, the, the minimum rate of entanglement that is required to prepare your given state uh, in the asymptotic regime with the asymptotic vanishing arrow. This is entanglement cost. So why entanglement cost is important? Uh, I think there are two main reasons. One is that entanglement cost helps you quantify the cost of your quantum information processing tasks, right? For example, uh, if you want to, you know, consider you in a distributed uh, quantum information processing regime, what you can do is to do LCC and, you know, distribute some time between them. Okay, if you want to prepare a state, implement quantum operations and so on, uh, what you need is actually entanglement. And another uh, is, you know, fundamentally help you to understand the reversibility, right? Uh, you need the time cost to help you to determine whether the time theory is reversible or not. And uh, if the theory is not reversible, how large can the gap be? Okay, this is uh, why we need to estimate the time cost. So um, actually estimating time cost is very challenging and uh, here are some unknown results. First, um, in 2001, Hayden, Horodesky, and Taho, um, they show that entanglement cost is actually given by the regularized uh, entanglement of formation. Okay, even for entanglement formation itself, it's difficult to compute. And uh, what is worse is that 
uh, Hastings' result implies that regularization is necessary as entanglement formation is actually not, you know, is not additive in general, which means we need the regularization. Okay, and also um, for some basic examples like isotropic states, and also little is known for even for basic states, and also uh, little is known about the estimation methods. So then actually what we want is, you know, is to obtain, you know, lower or upper bounds for in time cost. And uh, we need two, uh, I want to say we need two important properties. One is computable, which means you can, you know, uh, efficiently to know your, uh, the cost of your ta target states. Okay, another is faithful, is to tell you that there is, you know, the minimum in time cost if there is. Okay, it's computable and faithful. And what is known, uh, what are the known bounds? Uh, one is called squashed entanglement, uh, introduced by Chris Tendo and Winter in 2005. It's just, you know, minimize the conditional mutual information of the standard state. And this one, unfortunately, is not uh, efficiently computable, but it is faithful. And there are another two. Uh, one is in 2017 uh, by myself and uh, uh, Duan. We have a pinch the SDP bound for it. And also recently, uh, Louis Vico and Bartosz, they have, you know, the temporary log negativity bound also for in time cost. And this two bound is kind of, you know, not very robust to noise and also uh, not faithful to MPP states. So the question is, can we have a computable and a faithful estimation for in time cost? And here comes the, the first main result. And the answer is yes, uh, we can, you know, uh, establish a lower bound for in time cost of an arbitrary bipart type state under either LCC or even more powerful uh, or PPT operations, uh, which are, you know, uh, CPTP operations completely preserve positive time transpose. And the bound looks, you know, uh, like kind of simple. It's just, you know, what you need to do is to maximize the fidelity uh, between your given state and another substate who's has this kind of uh, mass calculations, like the take the partial transpose of it and the absolute value and transpose it and calculate the one law. Okay, this is so-called, uh, we will introduce it in more details later. Okay, so this is the lower bound. And this satisfies the, you know, what we want is it's computable and uh, faithful. Okay, so to better introduce this lower bound, however, uh, go back to the uh, function called binegativity. So what is binegativity is uh, defined in this way, and actually uh, this is an important function. Um, it was first uh, introduced by ordinate more Robert Winner in, in 2002, and they show that for quantum state has, you know, positive binegativity, uh, it has a very interesting, you know, phenomena that the asymptotic, you know, relative entropy of entanglement does not exceed the rings bound. It's a very nice result. And also, um, ordinary planio and uh, I search, they show that for this kind of state with positive by negativity, uh, the exact entanglement cost under PPT operations is directly given by log negativity. Okay. And uh, you know, uh, you may wonder what kind of states has this kind of positive by negativity. Actually, there are many. All pure states uh, have this property, and also a uh, winner state, Gaussian state, and also uh, Hizaka shows that all two qubit states satisfy this constraint. Okay, and let us continue. So, in in you know, in quantum resource theory, we sometimes usually use uh, this kind of divergence between your given state and the free state to try to understand the resource findings of the state. Okay, and here, uh, what the previous results mainly focus on is actually on the state itself, right? Like if rho satisfy positive by negativity and uh, you have some nice properties, okay? And our focus here is that we want to, you know, move our, you know, uh, focus to the second, to the free state. We want to understand, we want to introduce uh, bi-negativity properties uh, to the free substates and see what will happen, okay? And uh, so, for example, easily you can put, uh, if sigma is the free substate, it's separable PVT, okay, it is positive um, by negativity okay? And then 
this means uh, only detecting the positive by negativity is not enough for free states if you want to get more results uh, in time theory, okay? Because, you know, all two qubit states, they, are, uh, they have positive by negativity. So we want to go further and we look at the uh, log negativity. And before that, we can first introduce this so-called absolute operator partial transpose. You take partial transpose of your state and take absolute value. And then uh, log k negativity is just that you repeatedly apply this function to your state, okay, k times, and uh, then take the trace and take the log, okay. And simply, if you, for k equals to one, it just recovers the log negativity. Okay, this is a uh, kind of generalization, and we will see uh, this quality actually useful. So then, uh, let us look at the usual three substates in time theory. Okay, the first one uh, is the PPT set. It's like, you know, uh, positive and, uh, you know, normalized operators uh, with zero log negativity. This is the PPT set. And uh, uh, this PPT one is just to, you know, uh, use the log k negativity we just introduced. Uh, it's like log negativity, not uh, positive. The subset is called PPT1, and uh, it actually is just the, the ring set, okay, which has many applications in estimating quantum channel capacity and distributed entanglement. And moreover, we can, you know, extend this Rn1 to Rnk and define a set of PPTK. So, uh, as you know, we can show some, you know, uh, properties of uh, log k negativity. Uh, we can show a hierarchy of free substate. Okay, and here, uh, traditionally, this is uh, the the core is the separable state. Okay, in all the you know substate, uh, in all the quantum states, and uh, uh, this you know dark blue is the set of PPT state, and the outside is the the uh, originally people focus on ring state ring set. Okay, and we can show that there is a hierarchy from PPT1 to PPTK, okay. And here we found that actually uh, from PPT2, the, this kind of free of subsets is already very useful. So uh, with the new free set, uh, we are able to you know, define some new, uh, quantities. So the first one is, you know, we can, we just, uh, uh, use the sandwich, the Ren relative entropy. We can define the Ren alpha divergence of uh, K negativity, just writing this way. And yeah, and here I just want to say that we just choose K equals to two and the alpha equals to one half. And uh, this well gives you the uh, logarithmic fidelity of by negativity. Okay, this is the, the, the bound, okay. And this quantity, uh, has many nice properties. So uh, after we already uh, have this bound, uh, it's easily to show the, uh, you know, how it can lower bound the income cost. Okay, here I uh, give a brief sketch uh, of the proof. So first we can use, you know, the, the um, result that the cost is lower bounded by the uh, regularized relative entropy of entanglement. Okay, this first line gives you that uh, the cost is lower bounded by this ER to the infinity. And then uh, we can write down this ER to the infinity and uh, apply the monotonicity of alpha in the sandwich link entropy and you have this um, further quantity, you know, apply uh, the, the log fidelity of by negativity. And then uh, this quantity, uh, you can, you know, prove it is somehow additive, you know, luckily to be additive on the tensor product, and uh, then you can get rid of the, the regularization. It's kind of um, some very um, common trick somehow, okay? And then you, you get the lower bound, you know, uh, this log fidelity of by negativity is lower bound for the in-time cost. And uh, what are the properties of this lower bound? Okay, the first one is, um, you know, because of, you know, uh, you involve fidelity uh, in the objective function and also this PPT2, 
uh, can all be you know characterized via this kind of semi-definite programming techniques, and you can you know just use semi-definite programs to compute the the lower bound. And uh, the second is that uh, with this prime and do you know uh, SDPs, you are able to show uh, it is you know somehow additive on the tensor product, and mm -hmm. moreover it is normalized for maximally entangled state, and also it is faithful. That is, we, uh, in the paper, we show that for any uh, state with non-positive partial transpose, uh, this bound is always positive. Okay, this is so-called faithful. And then uh, we, we are planning to, you know, compare this bound with some uh, known upper bounds. Uh, one is the bound um, by myself um, several years ago. It mainly, you know, defined on the support of a state. That is why you know uh, it is not faithful because for four rank state uh, the projection is exactly identical. Okay, that is this bound is not that good. And um, moreover, uh, also we will compare with the bound uh, log temporal negativity uh, by Lemian regular. Okay, so here is uh, the first example: some noisy bare states. So let us consider. Uh, just, uh, you know, some bare state under some ambient damping and uh, depoising noise. And we can, you know, uh, apply our bound and also can use Wouter's result to calculate the information. The dashed line is the formation and uh, the solid uh, red line is the our lower bound for income cost. And uh, the blue one are all previous upper bounds. Uh, because it's for foreign states, all previous bounds will vanish for this case. And we can use our lower bound to, you know, to determine the, you know, this shaded part can characterize the range of the true income cost of these noisy bell states. And also, uh, we can apply our bound, you know, to, uh, in, you know, we can choose different ranks to show what will happen if we consider uh, the compressing between our bound and previous bounds for you know, states with different ranks. And then can ensure that uh, when the rank increases, our bounds can provide a substantial improvement. Like for example, for compare with the previous SDB bound in ETA for high rank, you know, like three by three system, uh, for rank three, you know, previous bounds cannot vanish uh, while this bound still you know, works well. And also uh, when compare with uh, temper log negativity when the rank is high, uh, this bound also performs better. Okay, and then uh, we further apply the bound to explore the so called uh, isotropic state. Actually, for isotropic state, both disturbable entanglement and the income cost are all difficult to, you know, to estimate or I mean, no solutions yet. And or here, uh, what we know is, you know, there are People can calculate the income formation for uh, for the case D equals to two, and apply our bound. We are able to show uh, analytical lower bound for you know for the income cost of isotropic states or the income cost of depoising channel um, for arbitrary dimension. Okay, this lower bound just for arbitrary D and arbitrary noise F. This is the uh, application. And if we just try to plot it for d equals to two and d equals to three, um, it turns out in this way. And uh, the dashed line is the formation, while the red solid line is our lower bound. Okay, and, uh, but for this case, uh, you can see the rings bound still lies between it, uh, which means uh, there's still space to either improve the formation or the lower bound. Okay. And moreover, um, we are, with this kind of you know quantitative lower bound for cost, uh, we are able to quantify and understand more about the, the uh, irreversibility. Okay, here uh, we can try to estimate the irretrievable PT entanglement by just you know define this kind of cost minus uh, disturbable entanglement. And previously. Um, in, in my previous paper, we have a counter example for the irreversibility on the PV configurations. And actually, uh, there is a question is whether this example is robust, the irreversibility is robust on the noise, for example, the noise. 
and it was unsolved. And here uh, we are able to show that uh, actually it is robust for small noise. Okay. <clears throat> it just means, uh, as you can see here, when the noise is small, you know, there's still a region that uh, the irretrievable entanglement is still positive, uh, which means that for all these foreign states are notified in noise, uh, the irreversibility on the PVD operations uh, still holds. Okay. Then uh, we are moving to you know, apply this lower bound further to uh, estimate the entire cost of quantum channels, this kind of dynamical version. <clears throat> so in this version, the key question is to understand the, you know, the minimum entanglement uh, that are required to uh, implement your quantum channel uh, via LCC operations from Alex to Bob. <clears throat> and pre previously, uh, the, the work by Birdival shows that actually you can use the you know, state income cost to lower about the channel's income cost. And here we can, you know, just uh, uh, have some, you know, corollaries for that. Like uh, we can simply use the choice data of channel, uh, plug in our lower bound to uh, find the lower bound of your, the income cost of your quantum channels, okay? <clears throat> the reason is simple, like you can, uh, because, you know, the cost of a channel is uh, lower bounded by maximize the, the you know over um, some uh, a primes of the channel the cost of this output state and then you because ec is lower bounded by this log fidelity of by negativity and then you can get this lower bound and also uh, we can use some you know variational approach to you know further optimize the pure state i'll just show you some uh, examples <coughs> So uh, here is one example, the ambulant damping channel. Uh, we are able to show that uh, the lower bound is given by this uh, red line, while the capacity, the blue line is the capacity. And you can see that, um, you know, kind of irreversibility of uh, quantum communication. Okay, and also uh, we have some improvements for the term cost of high level winner channels. Uh, defined in this way, and previously the best known results, you know, are you know built on the so-called anti-symmetric subspace uh, given by this quantity, and we can show that uh, you know numerically the 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 better lower bound than the log four over three. Okay, so as reversibility is quite uh, popular in this workshop, I'm going to mention a bit more results. So, um, in quantum resource theory, we care about reversibility, okay? And this reversibility usually, you know, connects to uh, three operations. And for three operations, there are three major, you know, conditions. One is resource non-generating, right, RNG. Another is CP, or completely positive, kind of quantum, right? And then the, the final one is TP. Uh, trace preserving, which means your transformation is deterministic, right? Okay, and here let us have a brief overview. Kind of, uh, if your free, you know, RNG is characterized by PPT preserving and uh, CP and TP, actually, previous results show uh, no rever reversibility. Okay, and then if it's uh, non entangling positive and uh, trace preserving, uh, still not reversible. Okay, and then recent result by uh, Bartosz and Ludwiko in uh, the talk on Monday that uh, symptotic non entangling and complete per per positive, and also trace non increasing uh, is reversible. Okay, and actually, uh, in our work, we can further you know, consider another kind of trade off. Uh, we keep uh, you know, PVT and the trace preserving, and further relax you know, uh, the CP completely positive to just. Permission preserving and this kind of you know beyond quantum operations. Okay, and 
in the work, we mainly consider you know exact transformations under so-called uh, PPT equality operations. This one relaxed the, the CP condition and the zero for uh, not physical. Okay, and what is PPT equality operation? Uh, it is just uh, permission preserving, trace preserving, uh, and PBT preserving <clears throat> maps. Okay, and as you can see here, uh, LCC relates to separable, separable relates to PBT, and is further relates to PBT quasi operations. And all another direction uh, is to keep a positive. Okay, and here uh, for this PBT quasi operation. Uh, we can also define the, the exact transformations between uh, states, like you know the one shot rate and the symphonic rate. It's just you know under these three operations, how many bell states you can you know transform exactly from a given state, okay? And also for cost is you know, the minimum cost. And here uh, under this kind of uh, PPT quasi maps, uh, we can show that. Uh, for any two states, there exists a PPT, you know, uh, HTTP PPT map that can map the row to sigma, if and only if the log negativity of row is larger than or equal to the log negativity of sigma. Uh, I, I remember there, uh, there was a request uh, on, you know, this kind of cute resource theory um, in the open problem session yesterday. And uh, if you do not mind, go beyond quantum. Mechanics. Uh, if you do not mind, you know, lose the positivity. Uh, this can give you that cute solution. Okay. So the idea of proof is that uh, you know after some derivation, the only thing you need to do is to construct a CPTP map that can map the partial transpose of rho to the partial transpose of sigma. And we can do it in this way. Uh, we can you know write down devote, you know, row TB to positive and negative parts, and also for sigma TB prime, positive and negative, and just, you know, we, we will, you know, uh, particular cut some positive parts to SE, okay? And then we, we can, you know, able to uh, construct uh, a set of maps, uh, E1, E2, and E3, okay? And these maps uh, works in this way, for epsilon one, uh, it maps R plus to S plus, and for epsilon two, it maps R minus to S minus, and for epsilon three, it you know works on the whole face and maps R plus R minus to S E. Okay, and uh, uh, first we guarantee that it can maps rho T B to sigma T B. Interestingly, the C B condition can be guaranteed by Assumption that the log negativity of rho is larger than the log negativity of sigma. Okay, and moreover, uh, the construction we show itself satisfies the TP condition. Okay, then we have a CPTP map that can map the rho TB to sigma TB. And this, you know, you just do some trick and you can get the HPTP map, uh, HPTP and the PVT map that maps the rho to sigma. And further construction details can be found in the archive paper. Okay, and there are some uh, more results after you obtain this condition and uh, also some so-called uncanny behavior. So uh, in this case, um, log, log negativity lies in between, okay? It equals to the exact cost and the exact distributed entanglement. And we can also follow previous proofs to show uh, this one equals to the, the ordinary Shannon setting. Okay, and for the left, uh, the cost is larger than the, you know, conversion of entanglement cost and lower bounded by temporal log negativity. Okay, and what we obtain is kind of reversibility of exact entanglement transformation. Uh, but there are some bad news. One is that in standard quantum resource theory, actually uh, ED is usually smaller than or equal to EC, but this kind of operations reversed over this kind of operational inequality, okay? And the main reason is that uh, the CP condition. Okay, without CP condition, actually, the, the data processing quality no longer exists. And the good news is, okay, for exact case, 
um, exact transformations remains unaffected. Okay, and there, here are some more sorts. For example, uh, when CP, when the you know free operation is CP, PBT, and TP, it cannot ensure your reversibility. Okay, and on the other hand, if we relax CP to emission preserving, if we throw away, it gives you too much. You know, it even gives you the exact transformation reversibility. Okay, it gives you too much. But anyway, here, you know, the result just being, you know, less quantum and you will have more reversibility. And then motivate us to think about what is the, you know, the balance. Okay, uh, anyway, here is the conclusion and outlook. So in our recent works, uh, we show a computable and a faithful lower bound for in time cost, uh, given this way. It's just uh, the log fidelity of by negativity. And also we show that if you relax your free operations to Hermitian preserving, Chris preserving, and the PPT, uh, you will have, you know, exact, you will have a reversibility of exact entanglement manipulation. Okay. And then uh, the question is like how to balance, you know, these kind of conditions of free operations and the reversibility, right? The generalized quantum state lemma, or, you know, how quantum resource become reversible by, you know, um, playing games with these conditions, and also what is the trade off? Okay, uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks for, for the very nice talk. Mm -hmm. So any questions? Uh, thank you for the nice talk. Um, and do we know that this measure of entanglement is whatever it is? Uh, you mean the lower bound? Yes. Uh, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the second question. Um, so the one that you defined for channels, uh, is it also additive for channels? Uh, I mean, if you restrict it, you know, just uh, the choice state, then it's additive. But if optimized state, we do not know it. We do not know it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your question. Yeah. Uh, by the way, for the monotonicity, we tried, but found it difficult. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Thanks for your talk. Uh, Really happy that you give one solution to this uh, problem of locally ordered resource series. Although this Hermitian preserving maps are so you can always write any Hermitian preserving maps as a difference between two CP maps, right? Uh yes. And then it sounds a lot. It it reminds me a lot about uh, this talk a couple of days ago was a virtual. Is it virtual quantum resource distillation or something? Yes. Right? Where they interpret this as a probabilistic, uh, <clears throat> probabilistic map. Right? Uh -huh. Do you have any nice way to understand? Because what you have is permission preserving, but trace preserving too, right? Yeah, and also PPT. And also PPT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there but for, for virtual, if you sample CPT, PPT, you can get any functions. Even. Okay. You can create any, yeah. Which I guess is what you see here too, right? Because you can do some weird stuff. Yeah, but you have an order to order all these things. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. Fine. I was, I was just gonna ask, but, like, do you have a nice understanding of why? What is this HPTP kind of operations, or is it just you have simply logged too much, and that's why you can get this kind of uh, weird result? Yeah. Yeah. As I mentioned, it's like my feeling is that um, it's just allowed too much. And we need maybe kind of trade off to you know to choose very carefully to obtain the reversibility people want. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Any other question? Uh, if there is no more question, uh, then let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>